Man, I said that it's time to go get that. Devil thought it's gonna break like a Kit Kat. Y'all got my back, now it's time for some get back. Run out of time, but this time he gonna get back. I got that smoke, but it's second hand. I heard that's bad for your health, you should quit. Man, what's up, guys? Uh, it's been a couple weeks since I got back on here, and it's mainly been uh, because I've been in Jonesboro and I've been uh, getting settled in and stuff, and I've met a lot of people that I didn't know I would get close to. One of them is my boy, C. Will. Say what's up, C. What up, what up, what up? <laughs> yes, sir. I love it. <laughs> uh, but we're about to get into some prayer. Uh, but but first, before we do that, one thing I want to start off with every episode from now on, you know, whenever I feature a guest, uh, is I want to ask them what their favorite Bible verse is or one that sticks out to them. And if they don't have one, that's okay. That's perfectly fine. Uh, but what's your favorite Bible verse, C? Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. You know, I love that because the first thing I think of when I think of self-discipline is see will Because uh, I'm going to start off with a funny little story. So, you know, like my second week here, I think, I was like, all right, I'm going to go up to the gym, like lift weights, get a good workout in. And so I got up at 530. And I remember thinking to myself, you know, I was like, man, you know, I'm getting up early. I'm doing good. I was like, man, I'm about to get it in. So I, I walk in the gym, and it's probably 545. And I look, and this man is out here stretching. And I was just like, what? what? Like, And I looked at him, and I said, you about to work out? He said, I just got done. And I was like, what? Like, what in the world? And, and I don't know. Uh Tell him a little bit about your routine, because when he told me about it, I was like, what? So Monday through Friday, I get up at 2. Um, I spend an hour um, in my Bible and reflection. That's my time with God. And then at 3, I do my own personal reading. Um, I'm getting into day trading and investing, so I'll spend mm-hmm. an hour in that in a book that I purchased on that. And then from 4 to 5, that'll kind of be my gym time. Uh I work out with my father in the morning, mm-hmm. and we usually get to the gym around 4.30. Uh, I'll stretch before, warm up, and then we'll probably start working out at like 4.45 around that time, and then I'll start my day. Man, that's that's so cool, and like, that inspired me to, uh, you know, I'm trying to get into a routine now of like getting up at 5.30, like, because man, I, I'm sorry, I can't get up at 2. Nah, yeah, it's, it's, it was different, I mean... It kind of like for me, I have I'm a I'm a morning person like off mm-hmm. the off the bat like I had to get up early whenever I was in high school I had to get up at like five thirty because the high school I was going to was in another state so I was listening I was actually listening to a podcast and they were talking about somebody who got up at two and I was like well let me see if I could try that and I got up and I wasn't tired and then I was like well let me see if I get tired throughout the day and I was like. Nah, I'm still not tired, so <laughs> yeah. I was like, well, I'll get up at 2, i get more done, and i just been sticking with it ever since. It hasn't been tough, like, it hasn't been like, dang, I gotta get up at 2, and I feel, like, groggy or anything like that. It's, I mean, I get up and be feel with energy, because I'm doing stuff that I want to do. Do this. have more time. Man, that's so cool, and, like, that's inspiring, too, because, you know, a lot of people know about the Kobe Bryant work ethic. You know, Kobe Bryant, he, he got in the gym at 4, and, uh, a lot of people didn't believe that. I heard a story. There's a guy named Alex Bazell. You ever heard of him? Mm-hmm. Well, he uh, he didn't train with Kobe. I think he learned from Kobe a few mm-hmm. times. And he said one time that he was going to test if Kobe actually got up at four. And he was on a plane at like four in the morning. And so he just texted him just to say, hey, Kobe, what's up? And he said, what's up, man? At like <laughs> four in the morning. <laughs> and then he was just like, oh, my gosh, he actually gets up at four. Yeah. Like, and it, I think it was after he retired, but he's, he's like, he still gets up at four. That's crazy. Yeah. Man. It's like muscle memory. It's kind of like when you go to the gym and you, you work on your form, like you just build that habit and it just becomes automatic. And I know For there's sure. people that's listening to this would probably be like, that's Cap. He don't get up at two. No, he gets, I promise you, I promise I, you this I man does. You, I promise you, I get up at two. <laughs> like, okay. I'm going to do that sometimes. Sometimes when I'm up at like 2, I'm just going to text him and text be like, you. good morning, bro. And he's going to be like, good I'm morning. Sure. I'm going to text you back. I'm going to text you back. Yeah. Me. But um, yeah, so we're going to get into some prayer. I know I didn't mean for that to go on that long, but it's all right. It's all right. It's good. So uh, start us off with some prayer, bro. 
Lord, I want to thank you for giving us um, this opportunity to share our stories and uh, come and just share your word and just talk about how great uh, you've been. I thank you for placing Caleb in my life. Um, even though he's younger than me, he's a very wise young man, and I just pray that um, we can both bounce each other, bounce ideas off each other, and uh, just help each other as we go along in our journey. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen, man. And and I think that's kind of cool, like, you saying that, because one thing I've learned is that you can learn from anyone. Like, you know, someone older than you, you can learn from them. Someone younger than you, you can learn from them. Man, I kind of want to get into, like, working camp, because mm-hmm. uh, I was really sad, because I was only able to work the first two days, mm-hmm. and I really, oh, really... Sad on that check. Yeah, yeah, on that what? On the check. Oh, my gosh. We got paid, we got paid good. Yeah, yeah, I know. But... But I, I was sad because, like, man, I going into it, I was kind of like, oh, man, you know, like, this, we might have some fun with these kids. Man, I loved it so much. <laughs> really? You didn't love it? <laughs> I didn't love it. I'm not oh, lie. what? No. That no. just made me just, that just reaffirmed everything I thought about kids. Oh, my kids. gosh, bro. Like, no. <laughs> no, I'm saying I, I'm just saying I enjoyed it because, like, Whenever we were working with them, you know, because uh, he had a station with defensive slides and I was helping him and it was fun. He took over, by the way. I didn't he, mean he, to. He, I didn't he, mean to. No, no, no. I'm, I'm not tripping, but yeah, he, he took over and he did his thing. I could tell he was passionate about it. So I was like, let him do his thing. I'm not going <laughs> to lose my voice. So yeah, just, no. Hey, go ahead and do his thing. don't you remember the second day when I couldn't speak? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> because, yeah. all right, so there were these kids at this station. Because what we're, the camp we're talking about is the the... ASU. Well, it's technically Coach Bellato's Coach camp. Bilotto, Coach, it's Coach Bellato's yeah, camp, yeah. and we were working it. And the second day, I had no voice at all <laughs> because I was saying, like, I would tell these kids. I, I think it was like maybe the five, six, seven year olds. Like when they came, attention span is so short. I'm talking like <laughs> yeah, one second. If yeah, that. <laughs> so they came to our station, and I was just like, "All right, guys, getting four lines," <laughs> and they just looked at me. They just look. They just look like what? And then I was like, all right, getting four lines. And then I had to like put them and be like, okay, this is one line. (laughs) This is two. This is three. This is four. And it took about like the stations are 10 minutes. And he was just like, uh, and like eventually I said, see, well, I need help. And he was like, guys, getting four lines. (laughs) And they still didn't listen to him. Uh, But that's besides the point. Um, You know, like camp, I loved camp because I felt like I could really pour into those kids like man, one kid just came up to me and just hugged me, and it was like <laughs> it was like amazing because it was just like it was almost like a ministry to me, just mm, like mm. being able to pour into kids and just look at them. Like there's this little boy named Jep. Everybody knows Jep. You know he got super long hair. Oh yeah, he was on the floor the whole camp. I didn't <laughs> see him. I didn't see him do one drill, or shoot one basket. I, all I saw. No, he was, shot some. He shot some. He was either on the floor or in somebody's arm. Yeah, well, and it was just because he's such a loving little kid. Like yeah. he just wants like yeah. like he would go up to players, tug at their jerseys or whatever, and he would just be like, "Hey, can I have a hug or whatever?" Yeah, and I yeah. I always gave him a hug because I love stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know he probably went up to you. No, there's nothing wrong with that. It's yeah. Nothing wrong yeah, but camp was fun, and uh, I want to get into uh, like maybe a little bit about your testimony, just because I loved camp because we could pour into younger players, mm-hmm. and so I want you to like you know kind of go into your testimony and kind of like you know talk about your best advice for younger players or younger people in general. Um, so as far as spiritually, my testimony, I grew up in church. Um, Church really wasn't an option for me. Uh, it was, you know, Sunday, we go to church. And I think that really instilled some things in me that I carried with me when I went off to college. Because when, when I got off on my own, you know, nobody was telling me when I have to get up. I mean, besides my coaches, but that mm-hmm. was just like Monday through Friday. But nobody was telling me I have to go to church or I have to read my Bible. So those habits that I built from my, when I was earlier in my age kind of carried me to Mm -hmm. where I am now. And I had some rough times in college, uh, especially spiritually. I had some times where um, I was angry at God because I didn't, I didn't know why things were happening the way that they were. And I questioned him and I've been through all the phases of the ups and downs. And I would just say that whatever you're doing or whatever you're going through, 
you know, you can't really be led by the things that you see. You got to hold on to mm. what your father tells you that you are and what he said that he will do. And you got to believe that undoubtedly. Yes, sir. Uh, they said that you only need faith the size of a mustard seed. And I really believe that. Uh, my father tells me that all the time. He's like, I may not have the faith of uh, Noah or Abraham, but I know I got faith of a mustard seed. So that's good, man. You know, just having just having that faith and really. Believing what you're reading and what you're hearing and what what you're seeing, um, and just keeping keeping that going. And then as far as for like sports, uh, I've been working hard for a while. Like this goes back to I used to get up early bef- in high school to work out and go to my school. It was just I don't know. It's not so much like for the sports for me. It's kind of like a mental challenge. Mm-hmm. Like because I feel like basketball is like all mental like any sport is mental sure. like you could do all the workouts in the world but like once you get out there and like things don't start going your way are you going to get down on yourself or are you going to trust the work that you mm-hmm. put in and just go out there and perform so that's really why I do what I do is for the mental the mental challenge of it and the advice I would have for younger players would just be that you know whatever you want to do you can do it but it's going to take sacrifice it's going to take consistency and it's going to take a belief system in yourself like you you don't want to seek validation from other people that's so to, good to confirm like so what good. you're doing is good like you you should know like it's nice don't get me wrong like for somebody to be like hey man you're doing a great job but that's not the reason why you should do it and i feel like the age that we're in yeah the age that we're in with like social media and and all that stuff like i don't i think a lot of people do what they do just to get attention which is i mean it's not a bad thing i mean having somebody mm-hmm. you know recognize what you're doing feels great i'm not for sure it feels yeah. great but that shouldn't be the sole, sole it should reason. be everything yeah that shouldn't be everything that shouldn't be why you do what you do so just stay true to yourself be authentic um it's nothing wrong with trying to copy uh, somebody what somebody else is doing and just put it into yours. I mean, people mm-hmm. do that all the time, but just don't. You just m- try to make it your own at the same time. For sure, so that'd be my advice. Wow, that was really good. That's <laughs> probably the most. That's probably the longest someone else besides me has talked on this. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Like it, that's awesome. I love that. No, but um, whenever he was talking, you know, if you noticed, he said, "Ah, oh, yeah, it's because I." Um, I was telling him about a book before we got started by Lecrae that I read is called Unashamed. And Lecrae used to struggle with acceptance. Like he would struggle uh, with like, you know, he got his validation from people and they would always fail him. And so uh, Lecrae is like saying now is, and it's on the back of the book. I flipped it. I showed him while he was speaking. Mm -hmm. It says, if you live for people's acceptance, you'll die from their rejection. And what that means is when... People's compliments are everything to you. Like whenever, you know, if someone compliments you, that's what brings you up. Then as soon as somebody rejects you, you're going to go right Damn, down. Yeah. And Sewell is one of the best people I've ever seen about staying even kill. Like, <laughs> it's kind of funny. Like, I'll look at him sometimes, like, like working out or what. I'll be like, bro, smile. <laughs> like I'm smiling on the inside but that's another thing like it's all a mental game like say if you're playing and you just got like this straight face like nobody's gonna be able to read you like they don't facts. know if you're excited if you're if you're mad like you mm-hmm. just kind of gotta stay you gotta say even I actually got that from Kobe because he was like whenever he would go through slumps and like how he would get through them is like he would distance himself from what he was doing and just kind of saying mutual on everything because if you get too emotionally attached to something then your emotions are going to fluctuate so For sometimes sure. those aren't the best indicators of 100 how things are really going so you just kind of got to stay mentally mentally aware and mentally sharp like that that's facts bro and that's kind of that's honestly true with anything like yeah, as far as yeah, your emotions yeah. go yeah. like that's something i had to learn because all right so one of my biggest pet peeves and it's because i used to be i used to be this way is when people get the that's just who I am attitude. Mm, you know, yeah, when people yeah, are like, uh, oh, that's just me, bro. And Yeah, that's horrible. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's horrible. Yeah, because like when it came to basketball for me, you know, when I was in high school, I was the dude that if I got an am one, <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. like 
I was like, you I know what I mean? I was the same way. <laughs> yeah. And it's not saying that's bad. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. It's not bad to play with passion, but like, think about it this way, okay? I was the dude that if I hit a three, I'd be like, ah, and then I'd be so focused on that that I would get blown by on defense. Exactly. Yes, exactly. bro. That just com- I think that's just a part of being a young player and just, you know. <gasps> but I, it's crazy. I still, I'll see people do that in the NBA. So I For don't sure. Know, like, if you don't nip it in the butt and be like, all right, I got to check that. But, like, yeah. it'll just, you'll just keep doing it. But, what yeah. I'm, yeah, what I'm saying with that is, like, I used to be like, oh, that's just who I am. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, this is who I am. Oh, this, I, man, I can't stand when people do that. Yeah. Because it's like you're limiting yourself from who you could be. I feel like people are constantly changing, just depending on the information that they're consuming. Like, if you're constantly in a mindset that you want to grow, mm-hmm. then that just who I am statement that that'll never be true. Keep going. You know, so I just I don't I don't agree with somebody saying that's just who I am because I mean you're kind of accepting that where you're at, and I don't I don't think God is ever gonna be is ever he's never gonna stop trying to improve for on sure, the, on bro. Faults because I mean. We're kind of just born in the sin. Uh, even when we get baptized, you know, we we give our life over to Christ and he died mm-hmm. for our sins. But at the same time, there was only one perfect person on this earth, and that was that was Jesus Christ. And I'm not Jesus Christ. So no, I'm not. I know yeah. that when I get up from here, your thought's going to roll into my head, and it's, it might not align with what I just read or what we mm-hmm. pray, prayed about. But that's okay, because I know that, you know, I'm, I'm working on myself. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And... That's the thing about, uh, you know, in our last episode, um, I did the episode with my one of my best friends. His name's Carson Douglas. Uh, Carson Douglas. <laughs> Shout out to K. Dougie, uh, if you're listening. But one thing, like, the episode was on acceptance. Mm-hmm. And it was, like, not acceptance of other people, but, it, like, whenever you accept Jesus into your heart, you're accepting that each day is a battle. Mm-hmm. And it's, like, you need Jesus. Think about it this way. If you're, like, in a financial hardship... Or if your identity is shaken, or if you know it's you know basketball is not going great, whatever, then you have something to lean on. Mm-hmm. You have something that not something you have someone to lean on. You're accepting that each day I have to pick up my cross daily, and that's the thing that it took me a while to understand. And that's why, honestly, like why I started this podcast. It's not about being perfect. It's about being real and understanding that you're not perfect. Mm -hmm. And when you understand that you're not perfect, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm not perfect. I need Jesus. And that's not to say that we're just like these disgusting, awful people. Like, Mm -hmm. in a sense, we are. But at the same time, it's like we're made in the image of God. And when we have Jesus, we have something to lean on. Things aren't going great. I'm still going to trust God. Yeah. And it's like, that's so hard to do. I mean, that's just a part of the Christian walk. Like, mm-hmm. once you get into the Bible and you start really reading it, like, that just comes with it. Like, trials mm-hmm. and tribulations, because that's when God can step into comes. your life. And, and yeah, mm-hmm. and that's when you grow in your faith and, and your spiritual spirituality and stuff like that. So, like, you should... I, I'm getting to the point now where, like, when things happen that are unexplainable, I I go towards, go towards them, like, confidently, because yes. I, like... Oh, this is this is what this is where I'm gonna grow. I'm gonna see, yeah, yeah, this is where I'm gonna see the Lord come into my life and and show me how powerful He is. So, yes, sir. Yeah, I don't. I love that, bro. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that that was big for me understanding that. So, um, there, this is a chapter in Sadie Robertson's book called "Live" that I was reading. You know, I talk yeah, about Sadie about Robertson. That, yeah. yeah, talk about Sadie Robertson, Tim Tebow, uh, you know, Tim Michael Tebow. Todd. Yeah, no, I don't know Michael Todd. Michael Todd. Well, there's like all these different people that. Um, I don't listen to Michael Todd as much, but I listen to Sadie Robertson and Tim Tebow all the time. And so I was reading her book, uh, not last night, but the night before. And dude, this, like, you know, you were talking about how people like basically they get told what to do mm-hmm. or whatever, and they just follow it. You yeah, know? yeah, blindly. Yeah, yeah blind. And so this is this was in her book last night, and I want to read it. I off. This is like her quote, a quote from her. I often think many of us are following the same handbook for life, but no one has a copy of it. We can't hold it in our hands and read it, but we know exactly what it says. It's an unwritten set of guidelines about how to thrive and be successful in life, and its author is named The World. Mm. It goes something like this. Look out for number one. You do you. You only live once. Wear less, get more. Whatever it takes to get likes. I have to ask, does anyone actually like the outcome? 
are we happy doing what that handbook that the world gives us says? It's as if we're following a diet, but nobody's losing weight. <laughs> if that's, that's ha- good. if that happened to you, would you keep eating according to that plan? No, you wouldn't. <laughs> Anytime we do something and we don't see results, we stop. That's just common sense. And so basically, she's saying like the world's handbook is like an ineffective diet. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh man, I'm gonna look for validation in people. Bam, failure. Yeah. I'm gonna look for validation in my sport. Bam, yeah. failure. Yeah. And it's like people go back and forth to it over and over and over again, Keep hoping, head, yeah. hoping, man, I hope at some point this makes me feel loved. At some point, I hope this makes me feel. I feel like that's how God works, though. Like he, he'll let you keep putting your faith in other things mm-hmm. besides Him, and then you constantly come back to Him and be mm-hmm. like, "No, this is where I need to be. No, mm-hmm. no, maybe I need to go back here. No, this is where I need to be." So, I feel like He's doing that on purpose. Like mm-hmm. I feel like that's that's another way that He He shows Himself in people's lives. Is like he'll constantly let you just go okay he'll go over there mm-hmm. he'll come back eventually once he figures it out <laughs> once he fig- hey man no, man that sounds like my friend Michael Robinson you know you don't know Michael mm-hmm. but if Michael was listening to this right now cause I I just love when Michael talks about Jesus cause he's so passionate about it mm-hmm. but that just reminds me of something Michael would say because he would, he would be like you know the Lord said to go over here but I went over here and he looked back at me and he went ah what'd I tell you <laughs> Yeah, and and I don't know, man. Um, but that's so true, man, because, like, I just love how she says we're all following the same handbook. Yeah. That's facts, man. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. when you look at the world and you look at, like, social media. The world is crazy. It's, <laughs> the world is crazy. And, and I'm so thankful because, like, we have a God. We have a 66-book love letter that God wrote us. Mm-hmm. And it tells us, you know. Like, you know, in Romans, Paul says, do not be conformed to the ways of this world. Mm -hmm. And it's because God doesn't want us to look to things that are never going to satisfy us. Mm -hmm. And it's like, and I want to be like specific when I say that, you know, like basketball is not a bad thing. Your friends are great. We are made for relationships. Mm -hmm. But it's like, you're everything, your foundation, like what you build your life off of. The only thing that will consistently uh, always fulfill you is a relationship with Jesus. Mm-hmm. That's it. No, I agree, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. I haven't found this peace that I feel, mm-hmm. this security, like in anything else besides my relationship with God. For like, sure. These past few months that I've really committed myself to just giving Him an hour of my day each morning, and then for sure, bro. just doing little things throughout the day, just constantly feeding that word into my into my mind into my spirit i mean i just i've never felt like this before mm. have you ever heard um people talk about the lens you view life through mm. okay so a lot of you know people like uh, sadie robertson's talked about it lecrae's talked about it my boy darius has talked about it. shout out to darius shout out to darius we know darius darius the is man actually of a million jokes <laughs> yes sir well darius is the uh one of the like FCA people here at the school, him and Todd Baumgartner, and everybody loves Darius and Todd, and like, um, Darius is actually going to be my next guest, uh, he's going to be on the next episode, so just letting y'all know, but anyways, okay, back to Darius, so Darius has talked to me a lot about the lens that we view life through, and I've, you know, read into it and stuff, and it's basically like, whenever you view life as depressing or you view life as like oh I don't know what my purpose is like everything you look at you don't see as beautiful Mm -hmm. so it's like think about it this way if I'm trying to view life through the lens that Jesus wants us to view it through then I'm gonna look at every single thing and be like wow God made that Mm -hmm. wow that's that's in the image of God sorry my voice oh my gosh um but it's like think about it this way when you're viewing things through the lens that Jesus wants us to view things through, like through him, that person that you look at and you're like, bro, they're making me mad. I'm tired of them. Instead, you look at them and you're like, man, maybe they're just broken. Mm-hmm. Man, maybe they just need some love. Mm-hmm. Maybe they just need this. And it's like the way you view everyone and everything just completely changes. Like your life perspective is just totally different. Mm-hmm. And I think that whenever we implement that into basketball or into life or whatever like whenever you play basketball now you're not playing for yourself now you're playing for god's glory so it's like you're not 
like there's nothing to prove, mm-hmm. you know? It's like, yes, you're content, but you're not satisfied. Mm-hmm. So like each day you go to the gym and you're like, man, I'm going to get better today. And when I do it, I'm going to give glory to God. And what it means by like giving glory to God is like whenever you go to the gym, you're like, God gave me this ability. So by, by doing my best, I'm going to glorify him and thank him for the ability that he's gave me. So like whenever you succeed, when you say that your glory is to God and you mean that, then people look at you and that's a chance to influence people. Mm-hmm. You know, like you said, basketball is not everything. It's like the influence and the impact you give people whenever you play. Yeah, it's major, man. You'd be surprised how many people just would listen to you because you're good at basketball. I like, swear. They don't know anything about you, but they see you out there on the court and they mm-hmm. just look at you as like a superhero. So <laughs> it's crazy, man. Yeah, that's so true. Because like, um, like whenever people just think of like athlete, they think of like somebody that's uh, – like a role model, mm-hmm. I guess. Just because there's so many kids that, like, they just look up to people that play yeah, sports yeah, because, like, yeah. you're literally like a superhero. I mean, we're glorified, like, in the media, man. It's mm-hmm. just college athletes and, like, professional athletes, like, we're just looked at as, like, this rare breed that, you know, because it's so hard. It's so, so hard to even get a Division One scholarship. Like, mm-hmm. in high school, you had, like, a million guys just trying to fight for, like, five or six offers on, on a Division One team. So, I mean, it's it's tough, man. And, and once you get to this level, you know, the competition gets better. And so it's just, I don't know, it's just it's just hard to get, get to this level and then maintain, too. Yeah. And, and stay at this level, too. And I think it's really cool. Uh, <clears throat> you know, someone told me, they were, like, like whenever, uh, I think I... I was talking about SeaWorld to somebody, like maybe Coach Scoot or somebody. I don't remember who it was. I don't, mm-hmm. don't quote me on that. <laughs> but uh, they were like, yeah, man, SeaWorld, you know, he was third in the country last year in shooting. And we haven't talked about that. You know, my boy's a humble beast. He's not talking <laughs> about it. But he was third in the country last year in three-point percentage at 50%. Yes, sir. <laughs> but, uh, but so I was thinking to myself, I was like, you know, I see this dude shooting every day after practice or every day. Like, he's just – in the gym at four or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's like, because I remember thinking to myself, I'm like, man, this dude shot 50% from three. Like, what in the world? But now I see why. Because <laughs> I see him, like, getting up early, uh, you know, getting shots up. <clears throat> oh, my gosh, but my voice. <laughs> like, I see him getting shots up, and I see him, like, doing all these things. And I'm like, okay, that's why. That's why he mm-hmm. was third in the country in shooting. And... I think it's really cool because you've talked to me about like knowing your role, mm-hmm. like not in like just on a team, but in life. Mm-hmm. Like you know, uh, I just think it's really cool how like you you like do your best to excel at your role. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I actually wasn't a shooter uh, when I was in high school. I didn't start really shooting the ball until I got to college. I was more of a driver, and then when I got here. Um, I didn't have the ball in my hand as much, so I didn't. I wasn't really creating plays mm-hmm. or, or making plays like that. So I just had to um, sharpen up another part of my game, uh, which was shooting. So I, I relied heavy on that for the past three or four years. And then last year, I kind of just broke through the ceiling and, and I shot the best uh, since I've been here. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it's just it's just a testament to to hard work and uh, consistency, and you know you'll do some. Uh, some things you didn't think you could do. I didn't. I never thought that I I would shoot fifty percent from the three point line. Right. That was yeah. That was that was a good accomplishment. And I think that's a testament to like, like something I used to struggle with is I used to be like you know like I'd get mad when I'd miss and mm-hmm. I'd be like oh my gosh like, uh I gotta be perfect every play and it's like I think. You know, I've already, like, you know, started to get on this route, but you've inspired me that every day is not about perfection, it's about growth. Mm-hmm. And, like, when your soul focus is on growing each day, like, you're going to get better. Right. And you're going to just continue to improve because when your sole goal is, like, all right, I'm going to glorify God and I'm going to continue to get better every single day. Like, whatever it may be, maybe shooting, maybe whatever. But it's, like, when your sole focus is on growth, there's no distractions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and you should have uh, like when you play sports or just in life in general, you gotta have a short memory, mm-hmm. uh, and that's something that basketball has helped me with. Uh, just having a short memory, especially like being a shooter. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, they say shooters shoot, 
So you shot, you miss. Okay, the last shot, you miss. Okay, the next one is going to go in. So just having that short memory and just staying present in the moment uh, will solve a lot of things, especially with your confidence. For sure. Well, all right, man. That was, whew, that was like awesome. <laughs> Appreciate yeah, you yeah, me, and uh, and thanks for coming on, man. Like, oh, yeah, I love it. it. I love it. Appreciate it. Uh, I'm, guys, SeaWorld doesn't have uh, social media. So I actually I, do. You do? Yeah, I thought I you do. didn't. I do. I, I I got back on it. Oh well, what do you have? I got Instagram. Okay, what's your Instagram? See, that's how you know I'm, I'm not one of the. I don't know about heart. Hold on. <laughs> well, I was about to say he doesn't have social media, but but he does, I guess. So, <laughs> so I'm gonna give you all his social media if you want to go. Tag him. C underscore Willow 5. Yeah, it's C underscore Willow 5. So you guys give him uh, a follow. And I'm going to, like, I'll tag him in the post on the podcast. So, um, but yeah, guys, man, I'm so happy that we got Will on. Get some perspective on, you know, what Division One athletics is like. And plus, you know, like, what it means to be a Christian athlete. I think he's a great example of not someone that's an athlete that's a Christian, but a, someone that's a Christian that's an athlete. And uh, I'm just happy. I'm very happy that I've gotten to know him since I've been here. He's been like a big brother to me. It's been really cool. I got Phoenix. Oh, my gosh, bro. Hey, well, I mean, I got Phoenix, too, but, like. I got Phoenix over the Clippers. Paul George played amazing last night. Yeah, he did. So, like, it's 3-2, to two, right? Yeah, it's 3-2. Bro, I asked my Siri last night. I was like, hey, what's, this, what's the score in the series? And then she was like, 3-1. to one. I was like, no, it's not. It's, it's three, three to two. two. It's three to two. And like I was like, update yourself or something. Yeah, that's she, why I, she's slacking. That's why Alexa is better. Yeah, I need to get Alexa though. I I haven't really. I don't know. I just been all Apple. Is anything besides Apple? It's yeah. Just like, ah. Well, it's the best. But okay, sorry, I didn't mean to get off. But uh, yeah, we're gonna close with some prayer and we're gonna get out of here. Man, uh, glad to have Sewell on. Dear God, thank you so much for this amazing day. Just to you know, get my brother out here, just to give us some perspective on uh, what it really means to glorify you, what it means to grow each day in the Word, uh, in sports, and whatever in life. And I pray that our words can breathe life into people. You know, letting them know uh, that nothing in this world is ever going to satisfy them or fulfill them like you will, Lord. Uh, the joy and the power that you give us is amazing. Uh, it's just amazing to you know, see firsthand like people. Uh, having success, you know, having significance where they're at by glorifying you, Lord. And I pray that uh, you help me to, you know, like see the good things that Seawell has done, model myself uh, after that, and just uh, continue to work to glorify you every single day, Lord. I love you so much, and I thank you for everything, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, see you guys later.